Hey guys, I'm Level 1 Online, and in my previous video I covered the Sega only RetroPie build by YB. He recently released a version 2, and I'm going to show you where to go to download that, but for others out there who might have uh, internet issues and are not able to download another 32 gigabyte, that's fine. I'm going to do a tutorial and give you some steps on how to make changes and adjustments on your own. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you soon. Alright, first thing I want to mention, when I do these long-winded tutorial videos, what I recommend doing is clicking on the little gear icon at the bottom right, and where it says speed, just make a quick adjustment to 1.25. That's going to speed up the rate at which I talk. Alright, now the next thing I want to cover is when we download an image from Arcade Punks, let me show you guys how to navigate this website because I hear this a lot uh, from a lot of the new users out there. It's really easy. Along the top, you're going to see where it says front end. Just highlight your mouse over that and hit Pi Image Downloads. When we arrive to this page, it's going to say right here along the top Pi Image Downloads name order so it's placed in alphabetical order but if we scroll down it looks really out of whack it can be a little intimidating and I understand you gotta understand these brackets right here it's kinda throwing off the naming convention what I recommend doing is hitting this button right here where it says newest so it's going to put the newest freshest images at the top of the screen and start with that and then start going backwards and see what you like as we scroll down, you're going to see two options right here. You have the All Sega Image version 2 by YB, and then there's a second one. The way to differentiate these two is right here. You see where it says NZB? That is an NZB file, and then right here it says Torrent. Now, if you open up this one where it says Read NFO, that page will take you to usually a video that will give you a little overview about what you're about to download. When you make up your mind and you're ready to download, what you do is you highlight your mouse right over uh, those letters right there, over the name of the image. You click on it, and then depending on which browser it uses, it might just save automatically or it might ask you to open now. So at the bottom left, it's downloading our torrent. That's going to go to our downloads folder. And we want to open that with the program called QBit Torrent. It's a free program. I highly recommend it. Uh, I'm no longer a fan of uTorrent. They made some changes that I'm not really in support of. The way to navigate to our downloads folder is simple. Usually down here at the bottom there is a file explorer. You just click on that. And then along the left hand side you're going to have a set of shortcuts. You click right here on downloads and then the torrent file is right there and you simply double click on it to open it with your uh, preferred torrent program once your image has fully downloaded here's what I recommend doing insert your SD micro card into your computer and there's a program called SD formatter you wanna wipe that card with this program right here and then once you do that you wanna launch another program called win32 disk imager now there is a video I did called Level 1 Online Takes the 10 Minute Retro Pie Challenge. That video I walk you through from start to finish the full entire 10 minutes on how to burn an image. Alright great so at this point make sure you put your SD memory card into your Raspberry Pi and go ahead and power it up. Remember the basically the entire operating system and everything you need is on that SD micro card if it's not inserted nothing's gonna happen you're gonna get a blank screen so just to recap in my last video I covered the retro flag Sega controller now what we wanna do is in order to get this to detect properly we wanna get direct input so there is a Y button right here, right at the top, right in the middle. What we want to do is hold that down 
while plugging in our USB uh, connector. So now that we got it plugged in, uh, our first options right here is we hit a button to detect it and then we hit up, down, left, right. We hit start, select. Now here's where it can get a little tricky. So I'm going to just call out the order in which we do this, okay? It's C, B, Y, A, X, Z. And then at this point, left trigger, right trigger, we can just skip everything for the rest of the list. Now, when we get to the very bottom, this is important. We need to, whatever we set select to, we're going to put that as our, as our hotkey. And then from there, when you get to the bottom here, whatever you set A to, which in this case is our C button, you go ahead and hit that to acknowledge the OK. And because we have our controller set up this way, the way we're going to navigate is with our B and C buttons. C will go forward, B will go back. Okay, so at this point, from this point in the video going on to the end of the video, this is very important. We want to make sure that our Raspberry Pi is connected to our home network, the same network that our computer is connected to. If your Raspberry Pi is not connected, this isn't going to work. If you're not able to do that, then just stop what you're doing right now, stop this video, and just go download the image because you're not going to be able to reproduce the steps I'm going to introduce. What we want to do first, we're going to set up the groundwork. I'm going to go step by step. We want to go to our RetroPie configuration screen. So we want to get some information about this. Now, on most images, sometimes in some scenarios, they do not have what's called SSH enabled. On this one, it does. But I want to give you information in case one day you decide to make your own Raspberry Pi images. I can tell you this, I'm on the Facebook groups and if you ask for help on pre-made images, they're either going to delete your post, they're going to say something snarky, or they're going to say create your own image. So I'm going to give you information for the one day you want to create your own image. So first thing let's check, let's check Raspy config. Okay, on this screen, we're going to scroll down with our uh, arrows and we're going to go to interfacing options. Now at this point, hit the left or right arrow and then now it'll say select. Go ahead and hit the B button on your controller. Then hit the down arrow to highlight SSH. Hit the left arrow or right arrow on your controller where it says select. Go ahead and hit that. And it's going to say, would you like SSH server enabled? Make sure yes is highlighted. And then hit OK. And then from there, uh, hit left or right to finish. And it's going to take us back to our main menu. Now, the next bit of information that we need to gather, we need to find out what our IP address is. This is a just-in-case scenario, OK? So let's go ahead and hit Show IP. All right, so my IP address is 192.168.1.15. I recommend grabbing like a little piece of paper and write that down so you remember it. At this point, just hit OK. And it should boot us back to our RetroPie configuration screen. And if you need help setting up Wi-Fi, there's an option down here for Wi-Fi. You're probably going to need to hook up a keyboard to type in your Wi-Fi password. Uh, there's plenty of other videos out there online to show you how to do that. I'm going to skip that. What we need to do now is navigate back to our computer and I'm going to put this link in the description. We need to go to Easy Hacks website and download the RetroPie toolkit. This is going to make life a whole lot easier. So when we go to this page, it's going to have a quick description of everything that's included. What we will be covering is right here the factory reset controllers option. Uh, this topic right here about flipping Sega Genesis with Mega Drive. 
After that, what we need to do is scroll down where it says install instructions. It says right here enable SSH. We already covered that. Second step right here, it says install the kit for Windows. There's also an option for Mac users. I'm on a Windows, so let's hit that. It says download the kit here. So just go ahead and click on that. And it's going to start to download in the background. So let's hit show in folder. So there it is right there. RetroPy Toolkit. Just right click on it and hit extract here. Let's open up this folder. So if you're a Windows 10 user, there might be an issue with connecting to the RetroPie. So where it says right here, fix connection error, I want you to right click on that and hit run with PowerShell. It's going to ask you input your RetroPie IP address. So when I pulled that up earlier, it was 192.168. Dot one dot fifteen push enter now at this point just to test it out and make sure it works right here it says log into retropy command double click on that hit yes and we're successfully logged in if for example that number changes that IP address let's say you have a second uh, Raspberry Pi that you have hooked up and this toolkit no longer works what I would just recommend doing let's close that out just delete the whole folder and then just extract it again and then start over that'll because basically what this file is doing is writing to these other file or I think this file and some of these other scripts with the proper IP address so instead of having to go into one of each into each one and edit them just delete it and just start over now I prefer to run these commands locally from my computer but if you want this installed there is a script right here called install easy hacks uh, toolkit on Pi and what will happen is they will show up these commands will show up on your uh, retro Pi uh, setup I'm sorry your retro Pi configuration menu So now that I've covered basic setup, the next thing what we want to tackle is possible controller issues. So once again from our windows on the left hand side we want to go to where it says network. We're going to let this populate and it should have our local computer listed here and it should have our RetroPy listed here. What we want to do is double click on RetroPy. We want to go to configs and then all and then retro arc and then auto config so right here as we can see it looks like he previously had the hori pad mini configured he also has a zero plus gamepad in some situations uh, if the person does not wipe this out before sharing an image it can cause conflicts with other people's controllers so let's just wipe all of this out to be on the safe side. So what's that what that has done is wipe out our controller settings for the RetroArch level of our game system. Now what we want to do is take that a level higher. We want to now wipe out our emulation station uh, controller configuration. I'm going to show you how to access that file. So we hit the back arrow to go back. So we're right here at the all section and here's emulation station right here. Let's double click there. There's a file right here esinput.cfg. Double click on that and then you see how it has our hori listed right here, our zero plus and our retro flag right here. So at this point we can actually we can just manually wipe this all out but what I prefer to do is you can use the easy hacks uh, script so we go back to our downloads here's our RetroPy toolkit and we can hit reset controller configs command double click on that it says you will need to uh, reconfigure and then at this point it's going to automatically reboot our Raspberry Pi so check this out now once it finishes rebooting we can go here to network go back to our retro pie go back to configs all 
emulation station. Here's esinput.cfg. Open that. Check that out. Now it's blank. Now it's all cleared out. This is a default file. Clean. Close that out. Let's switch back to our Raspberry Pi. So you do the controller setup just like how I explained it earlier. Up, down, left, right. Start select. And then in this order, C, B, Y, A, X, Z. And then we can skip everything and get to the bottom. And then whatever we uh, set select to, we want to make sure that it's, we set hotkey to that. And remember, start and select or hotkey and start will exit you out of your video games.